Last time, Chris Jacobs of Overhaul and Fame dropped off his 1968 GTX to get restored to its former glory, but with a 392 Hemi for SEMA. Now, Tony from Tony's Mopar Parts has flown out to the graveyard in secret to check in on his recently acquired 1970 Challenger, currently in the queue for restoration. Them, damn near killed them. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Today happens to be a beautiful day at Graveyard Cars. It's going to be a great day. I believe the rainbow has stopped at Graveyard Cars, 3654 Catherine Avenue. <laughs> Got it. Here's your mic. Why would I need a mic? Well, I told you we're filming this morning. Tony's coming in. Tony's here. Tony, what? So excited to see Tony. Why didn't you tell me he was coming? Hey, oh. I'm here. No smile, no happy. But if somebody's coming out, especially some 300 pound sausage from the East Coast to check in on his car, I'd like to know what's going on. Is that all right with you? Hey, T, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> well, somebody, uh, can I call you back? Well, it was a great day until you show us fat face. Yeah, till him didn't tell me that Tony was coming out. Why? Let me guess, makes good TV, does it? How you doing, man? Good, good. I'm sorry, brother. I. <laughs> Well, nobody tells me anything. I'm Tony D'Agostino from Tony's Mopar Parts, and I came out here to make a surprise visit and check on the status of my 440R2 Challenger that Mark's gonna be restoring. Mark didn't know I was showing up. I don't believe that he did. I did contact the director and let him know, and I just, I got the feeling that he didn't share that information with Mark. You said you were That's working awesome. on the car, and okay. I've, my Challenger? Cindy's Challenger? Oh, yeah, yeah. The problem is, if you recall, I made a deal with Tony sold him the car, the Challenger, 70 Challenger, we're gonna restore it, right? Well, that was quite a while ago. So in his empty mind, I'm sure he thinks that we should have it disassembled and be working on it. I didn't tell him that, you know. I didn't go out of my way and tell him that that was the situation because I wouldn't do that, you know. There's no problem letting him believe whatever he wants to believe, though. When I was out last with my wife, Cindy, uh, we were looking at some cars that Mark had and my wife fell in love with this 440 uh, RT Challenger because it was purple and that's her favorite color. So I ended up making a deal with Mark to buy the car and he was going to restore it and I just uh, wanted to see how he was doing with the restoration. You uh, put a couple pounds on since I saw you last maybe? Yeah, thanks for noticing. Yeah. No, that's all right. I <laughs> <laughs> so I got to stall this guy, which means food and the way he eats, it's a lot, right? It's not going to be a cheap day for me. Billy sandwich up here is like nine dollars. Back there they give him away, all right? Well, that's great. Yeah, Look, can how, we go? Uh, so when did you, when did you fly what? Uh, I'm here for a couple days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Hey, I gotta take a dump. I'll be right back. Make yourself at home, man. I just gotta go poop poop. Sorry, I gotta go poop. I don't gotta take a dump. I did that yesterday. Hey, I want you to get the... So go out into the yard in the second row in. There's a 70 Challenger, the purple one, the one I sold Tony. What's up with him? Don't, don't subdivide it, right? Just get the doors off as a whole. That's weird for him, even. Now, fake deuce, those are tricky because those, that's like karma. So if you tell somebody you gotta take a dump and you don't really have to take a dump, then one day you really will and they won't excuse you to do it and you're gonna turn your Fruit of the Looms into a fudge factory. So don't ever pull a fake deuce. Lesson learned. So, Peter, I think we're gonna go out and do an interview with Tony. Um, I think he just went out to the assembly shop, so we'll go ahead and... Uh... 
do that. I feel lighter already. Ha <laughs> ha. Where's T? Uh, he's out in the assembly shop. Why would he be out there? Was I not supposed to let him go out there? Oh, yo, T, what's up, dog? Hey. What you looking at, Matty? I'm ah, looking at the motors. That's yeah, corporate blue. 72. Well, I, let's go. It's in the back. What? I'm sure it's in the back. We're in this, your assembly shop. Let's go to this assembly. What are you wanting? I want to see the car. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm excited. I want to look at that with you at the same time, though, Tony. I want to look at a brand new baby. Oh, you didn't get to I got a question about a BS car out here. Oh, okay. Yeah. BS 23 JLB. Right. AAR. AAR. Axle package 391 car. Right. All right, so we know it has power disc brakes in the front of it. All AARs. All do. AARs do, right. Okay, but all the AARs didn't have power steering. Right. This is a power steering car with an axle package. Did it get a power steering cooler? Power, oh yeah. Anything 355 Anything and, and lower rear end. Dana or no Dana, just gear ratio. Right. Didn't matter. 354 and lower, technically. From 69 and up. I don't have the keys to that. Hang on here, I'm gonna grab my key. I thought I had it with me, but I don't. Okay. I'll be right back, buddy. I'm putting a lot of faith in Doug, because if he doesn't come through for me, then one, I've shot almost an entire day goofing around trying to keep him entertained. Two is he's gonna be smelling it pretty quick. He's gonna know it's not gonna pass the smell test after a while. He's not that bright. So I figure six or eight hours, you know, of this, and then he's gonna come to the realization that I'm stalling. All I can hope is the stalling was not in vain. When I came in today, I honestly planned on building my car over there, which I'm starting to think that I am not gonna get back to. But, you know, it's the name of the game. I mean, I go where I needed. I don't lock people out on purpose, okay? The fact of the matter is, every one of these doors here is on a safety feature. The minute that door shuts, it locks. Mark! Mark! Camera guy, you got a key, right? Somebody's gotta be able to let you in here. Every key here in the entire building is ran by, if you don't mind me showing you here, a little show and tell, that key right there. It gets me in, gets me out of everywhere. So it's called being prepared like a Boy Scout, folks. So you had the key to the gate all along? From the, when I first got here, I was uh, wanting to see the car and Mark kept finding other things for me to do, whether it was going outside to look at another car. Get the door. How'd you get here? This is getting a little ridiculous as far as I'm concerned, right? I'm a grown man, all right? I don't have to run around and hide from people, okay? Where is he? I still couldn't find them, and the only room I couldn't access was the room where the car was. And that's why I have a feeling that something was up. And so the guy replies, what, you think I really wanted a 12-inch pianist? <laughs> <laughs> well, that never gets old. Hey, T. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, look, I got a guy here. I got a roll, man. You know, that's funny. <laughs> I, all right, man. All right. <laughs> you, you left me outside. 
Yeah, I had some business needed but, to take care of. Uh, I just finished, well, this is a guy, you know where we buy all of our sheet metal and stuff. I just, he's kind of, he's got cancer, okay. testicular cancer, and I was trying to cheer him up. Uh, the shop's locked too, the body shop. Yeah, I keep it locked, we got burglars. There's guys working there though. Oh, well, they're in the shop, yeah. The nice thing about being friends with somebody, as long as Tony and I have been friends, you learn the things that make them tick. So let's go uh, check it out now. I need to divert his attention away from the car. He loves talking about the shows and the parts. Should buy me a good hour or two. Oh, got together. Before you had the naps go. Well, naps was good. You it have was a good a, time? Yeah, it was a good show there. It's you a know, big show. I've never been. Carlisle's actually bigger. Oh. Carlisle's bigger, but that's first in July and nationals are in August. Um, you go to both shows. Yeah. Well, that's good. Right. They like the show. They love when I went up your lot. <laughs> they, they, they buy into that. Is what now? They, they, they like when I, you know, show how you're wrong. <laughs> you know, I get it. Well, you know, when I'm out here and I help you out, yeah. you know, so you don't show bad stuff. You don't say something wrong. No. Or, no. no? Is that no. what you're doing? Oh, I get it. I see. Okay. So you go to your little shows and I'm not there to defend myself. Is that what it is? No, no, no. I, I tell them you're trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try. Okay. You got a second? Sure. Yeah, time. How long are you here for? I mean, a couple days. You know, this ongoing duel of Mopar minds between me and Tony, it's gone on long enough. I, I had the idea for kind of a Jeopardy type of set, all right, where it's all Mopar topics. We could squeeze in a few things in a couple of days, couldn't we? Yeah, but let's check the car. Yeah, yeah, no. Mm. Show me up. Show me something. We're going to find out at the end of the day who has the most cash. Who is the guy that knows more than the other guy? Without conjecture and opinions and I made a mistake, it's going to be a, a legitimate, fair, balanced, scrutinized, accurate game show that reflects the best of the best. Oh, look at me, I'm Tony D'Agostino. I correct Mark all the time on the show. Hey, remember the other day we were working on that set and why? Because the plaque for the alternates is in the ladies' room. Top Gun. Remember we were talking a couple years ago about how cool it would be to have a game, a game show type of game, like Jeopardy, but Mopar? Yeah. Moparty? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, why don't we just find out, Chief? Yeah, okay. Oh no, why don't we just find out? Stay tuned. Tony and Mark face off in an epic game of Moparty. And Mark does his best to distract Tony while Cousin Dougie races to disassemble the 1970 Challenger. This is Moperty! In the studio are today's contestants from Harrington, Delaware, Tony D'Agostino, owner of Tony's Mopar Parts. He likes long walks in the wrecking yards and Philly steak sandwiches. Our next contestant, standing five foot 12 inches tall, weighing in at 192 pounds, the master of disaster, the king of sting, the count of Monte Fisto. He's retired more men than social security, our reigning champion, Mark, lights out, Big Daddy, the real deal, too close for comfort, Warman. And next to him, Stan, with today's hostess, Alyssa Rose. Hello, contestants. We have five categories today. Bins, lunchbox lunches, high impact, carbapalooza, oh no you didn't, and Philly cheesesteak. Good luck. I would like Vins for 200. X, X, two, nine, L, nine, B. Tony? That would be a 1969 Dodge Charger 500 or 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. That is incorrect. He didn't say what is. Ha <laughs> ha, pork. <laughs> no, you messed up. What are you bumping his fool? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ketchup sandwich eating freak. <laughs> Mark. What is the 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona and or the 1969 Dodge Charger 500, depending on the rest of the sequence of the VIN? That is correct. Oh no, they didn't for 100. 
This cool option wasn't available from the factory on any 426 Hemi model cars. Tony. What is H51 air conditioner? Correct. That's free, I mean, that shouldn't even be on there. The same category 500. While variable speed wipers were optional equipment on most e-body cars, they came standard on e-body cars with this rare option. Mark? What is N96 or shaker hood cold air induction? Correct. What is FM3 Panther paint? Correct. What is a 3950? What is Pat's King of States? Correct. A33. Correct. Charger RT with a 446 pack. That is correct. You see what I'm getting at? That's why he answered all those questions. I'm sorry, Stan. You're doing great. What is maximum cooling? What is a 2903 carburetor? What is optional air conditioning? What is 446? What is optional? This, what, is, what is max? What is What is it? What is the AM radio in a 1970 Dodge Charger code R11? So why don't you take that? Okay. Yeah. And with that, we're ready for final Jeopardy. Right. Okay. So you guys are tied for the lead at 6,600, and Stan's falling closely behind at 1,200. Okay. So here's your guys' category for final Jeopardy. Famous Mopar cars of film and TV. And the question is, the only thing sexier than his car was the actor's mustache. All right, you guys have a few minutes to write down your answers, gentlemen. Good luck. Tony's answer is, what is Richard Petty's Roadrunner from the movie 43, The Richard Petty Story? And I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. So let's see how much you wagered. Everything. <laughs> you wagered everything? <laughs> Move on to what Mark's answer was. Better luck next time, kid. What is a 1970 Plymouth Valiant starring Dennis Weaver? That is incorrect. <laughs> You're wrong too, Bart. That's not wrong. That's wrong. And how much did you wager? $6,600. That's everything. Ah. Wow. And let's see what Stan's answer was. What is 1984 Ferrari 308 GTS driven by Thomas Magnum PI? That is correct. How is that right? On what planet in this world would an Italian sports car Ferrari be considered a Mopar? Anybody that knows anything about Mopar knows that Fiat bought out Mopar. They bought out Ferrari. Therefore, it's the same family. Oh. Do you not Therefore, know your Mopar Stan history? Lynch wins Mopar Jeopardy. That, wow. See you later, alligator. <laughs> Mark came to Doug and said, hey, we got to get this Challenger disassembled. And then Doug comes to me and asks for my help. So I'm going to help Doug with the Challenger because he's pretty new to this. So hopefully it goes good. You know, Doug's side. a fast learner. He's picking this process up really fast. I mean, there's still some things he needs to learn. I mean, I had to show him some extra little tricks on getting these doors off, but it's going really good. I'm happy. It's a very delicate process, and usually we take our time on this, and we put each bolt in a bag with a label on it, but for some reason we're rushing on this, so it's kind of really awkward. I don't, I just don't know why we'd be rushing this one.
All right, my fellow ghouls, we got a techie one for you today. As we've learned in the past, the fifth digit of the VIN is a letter on our old Mopars that represents the engine the car started life with. On the legendary 426 Hemi, what was that letter? Was it R, J, H, or was it all the above? That answer is coming up right after the break. All right, ghouls, how'd you do on this one? It's a little, little bit of a tricky question here. If you answered all the above, you're actually right. Now, here's why. In 1966, H represented the 426 Hemi. From 1967 to 1969, the Hemi designation was a J. And then in 70 and 71, it became an R. So technically, those are all right. If you guessed it, good job. That was a tricky one. Well, I gotta tell you, I've been on the earth a while, but I didn't see that one coming. No, that's... That's the problem with a sleeper. You, you can't trust a man. I, he came out of nowhere with that. That was, uh... That sucks! That was different. Why are we in here? Are we gonna go look at my car? Oh, you're a broken record. Well, all day. No. At the bathroom, jokes on the phone, yeah, yeah. the game. It was a funny oh. joke. No, you know what it is? I don't care. You know, we could drop everything and go, but I got something I've been actually... As soon as I knew that you had a little bit of time, Okay. I brought a very special car around and I need your help with it. I okay. Need... Then? Then we can look at your car. Then we can look at your car. Then we can look at your car. Okay. God, you're like a bro. Well, it's actually good timing that Tony's here. I just got in a 70 Challenger. It's a RTSE car. 426 Hemi. Very, very rare. One of only eight made. I'm going to have Tony go over it with me. This is a little bit like our Daytona Charger that we were trying to determine, do we restore it or don't we restore it? We already know we're gonna restore the car, but I'd really like to get his feedback on some of the things that I think are original that may have already been touched. So it'd be a good, good opportunity for him to do that and buy me a little time on the disassembly of his car. 1970 Dodge Challenger RTSE 426 Hemi automatic, one of 37. Burn orange, the white longitudinal, all been on there forever. It, look at the reveal from the factory. So here's the style line in the body. Yeah. More gap here from here to here. Right on it right here. Yeah. Back here it starts to show a little more and look at the gap there. It just means that style line wasn't perfect and that stripe wasn't perfect. Right. And so now today, we because we've got our hands on it, we got to try to make it perfect. It's like a hand-built deal today instead of assembly line. Right, right. But look at the interior. See the insert part of it there? See, that's just, I mean, it's great. I got, you know as well as I do, if, if we weren't gonna do anything, this is a miracle. Yeah, but if you get some kind of cleaner on it, it would, I bet you. Oh, I think we could. A, I think gosh. we could. What's wrong with this picture? Gosh. Let's see if I can get the old toner on this one. <laughs> oh, I see, it's a rim blow steering wheel, it's automatic. Okay, it does we got, say slapstick. what kind of seat belts? Oh, th these are those fancy seat belts. Deluxe seat belts? Yeah. Where's the thing? Where's the light? See, and these, uh, these seat belts, on the deluxe seat belts, they also have clips on the seats that the other seats didn't. Right. For them to right. rest on. I just thought it was kind of weird that the seat belt the light. Fasten seat belt the fastened right. seat belt light wasn't on the dash. Yeah, that is odd. Is it? It's a JS29 car. Right. Overhead consulette. Yeah, that's all there. Headliner folding down. Overhead console with three warning lights. Oh, that's got the seat. <laughs> yeah. You got it, yeah. Score one for the ice tray, the ice pick, the ice man, yeah. ice cube, shaved ice, snow cone. What would you want for a complete burn orange interior with these trim panels? Oh, gosh. What, what is this worth to sell? No seat dashboard and. Dashboard, this matching headliner, overhead That's a $3,000 interior. That's seat a $3,000. That's a three thousand dollar interior all day long. All day, you know. Might even be double that That's, because it's original. And where are they going to find one? It, it would look be at the dash weird. pad. The dash pad's half that money alone. You right. Know, it is more. You're right. It is I, I more. Think you're, you're I think you're double those numbers. Yeah. 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 I hope the owner possibly reconsiders about saving some of the originality stuff on the car. But you know, of course, it's the owner's car, and it's his prerogative to do what he wants. I mean, it's a great car to restore, but it's a great car not to restore too. Yeah. Coming up. Tony finally gets to see his car. The only question is, did Mark's attempt at stalling him actually work?
One of the most frequent questions I'm asked is about A-body cars. Why don't we do more of the A-body cars? Now, most of the cars that you see on Graveyard Cars, like over the past eight seasons, mostly are B-bodies and E-bodies. So that's your Cuda, your Challengers, your Chargers, your Roadrunner, GTXs, that kind of thing. An A-body is the small version. It was the meant to go fast economy version of those cars. So you like your Darts and your Roadrunners and Barracudas pre-1970. The 69 Barracuda on back to 64 when it came in, the Valiants, the Darts, those are your A-body cars. The main reason we don't do a lot of them, frankly, is they don't have the value that will qualify them to have a full-blown graveyard cars restoration. You could buy a really nice 68 Barracuda with a 340 and a four-speed, really nicely done cars for 30 grand. What's more than double that just to do the restoration on one? So that's kind of the short-term answer. It isn't because we don't like them. I mean, the A-bodies are a bit of an unsung hero. Two of the most collectible Mopars on the planet are A-bodies, in fact. The 1968 Superstock car, the Barracuda, which was a fastback, and the Dodge Dart, which was a two-door hardtop, they had race hemis from the factory. They weren't even meant to be driven on the street. They had disclaimers that said, this is not a street vehicle, this is a, a race vehicle. Uh, you talk about the Barracuda, they only made 70 of those cars. You get into the Dodge Dart, they made 80 of them. So you can see why, there's no doubt, those are very collectible high dollar cars. There also happen to be something I would love to restore here at Graveyard Cars, but haven't had a client send us one. Uh, while we don't have one of the super stock cars here at Graveyard Cars, we do have a version of one of the very first Cudas built. Uh, as just mentioned, in 69 was the first year that Barracuda actually became a Cuda performance model. We have a 69. A57 is the package on it. That gave it a 383 and a four speed. It also meant they only made 130 of them. If it was an automatic, they would have made 248. But we've got one of the 133 to three four speed cars. It's a blue on blue car, a really nice body on it. That's gonna be an exciting car to see done. So I'm not opposed to A bodies, just doesn't always make perfect sense for graveyard cars. So far, Tony from Tony's Mopar Parts has flown out to the graveyard in secret to check in on his recently acquired 1970 Challenger, currently in the queue for restoration. Because the car isn't as far along as it should be, Mark has been stalling Tony from seeing it, while cousin Dougie races to disassemble it. The only question is, will the plan actually work? There's a lot to see under here. Uh, early car. No cross ribs? Correct. I saw in the door was open, it was an October build. It is, okay, yeah. Which also, by October, we know that we lost uh, the speed shift, or the shift right, gate, the shift right. gate, and, and it's got slapstick Was it speed on. gate or shift gate? Shift, shift gate. Shift gate, yeah, that was an early one. Original cables, oh positive God. And negative cables. It's an extremely good survivor car. It's not only a Hemi car, and but it's a RTSE, so it's a luxury performance car, and being a survivor is just, icing on the cake. Look up top. Look at the fender. Look at the undercoating. No, the fender. fender. Yes. Hemi fender, if you will. Yeah. You know, I'm actually looking for his input on a lot of this stuff. I know about the wheel lips and stuff like that, but uh, you never know. You know, when you talk to somebody at his level, you may learn something. So no, it's not a setup or a stall just to buy time. You know, I got, I got plenty, of, plenty of things to do here, my friend. So this, when you hear, hey, has that got a real Hemi fender on that Cooter or a real right. Hemi fender on the Challenger? That's all it is, is that that area, in this particular case, it's about 10 to two, but Tony's saying more like 11 to one exactly. is cool. the zone that they normally do that in. But that's fascinating stuff. When Mark goes to restore this car, it'll be so easy because the car is such a good car to start with. You know, reproduction stuff is great. Most of it fits good. Some of it fits better than others, but not too many fit exactly like original parts. A good car though. Very good original Very car. Very nice original car. I mean, really nice. I'd be one for a high detailing engine and transmission go through. I agree. I think I have to agree. If it was my car, I wouldn't restore it. I would re-detail the engine and transmission and do a great overall cleaning to the car and interior and you know maybe replacing things I had to with original parts. But if for the most part I would leave it alone and just to improve it without doing anything that would detract from its survivor. So, all right, we did it, that's lunch. No, 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 before lunch. Yeah. Let's go check out my car. We're gonna check out your car. I have hypoglycemia, dude. I'm gonna take Tony out to lunch. Uh, he, he usually takes a couple hours to eat. He likes to take his time and chew every little bite. Uh, that'll buy me a couple more hours on the car. When we get back, hopefully, 
we're in a better position where I can take him out there. But I mean, I'm kind of, again, I'm, I can't really go out and check in because if I, he's on me, you know, on my heels everywhere I go. Let's go to lunch. We'll look at your car when we get back to lunch. So at this particular moment, everything is relying on Doug to get that thing apart. So it's really seeming like Doug's getting the hang of this on disassembling cars. I've got a ton of things to do, so I'm gonna head back over here. If he needs any help, all he's gotta do is yell at me and I'll come right back, give him a hand with whatever troubles he's got. Doug did a really good job on disassembling. I'm actually surprised. I mean, normally when we first show somebody, they always miss a ton of things. But Doug actually got it down and he did a really good job. I mean, there's one or two things, but hey, they're easy things and the car looks great. All right, ghouls, hello and welcome from freezing Oregon. It's a perfect day for this topic. I got a question for you. Trivia question, you might say. In 1968, Dodge introduced the Super B, legendary Super B. In 1971, it was the last year it made its appearance. During that span, true or false, the Super B was never available in a convertible model. If you think you know the answer, you should stay tuned after the break, because I'm gonna give it to you. All right, ghouls, what'd you come up with? Do a little Googling, come up with the answer? If you answered true, you're absolutely right. For some reason or another, the Super B, which again was built on a medium price class, just like the Roadrunner, was never available in any of the years they built the car in a convertible, where the Roadrunner certainly was, and many other models certainly were, the Super B never was. So if you happen to have a 1970 Super B with a convertible roof from the factory, you're probably a pretty wealthy person right now, since they didn't make any. Here's the thing about Tony, I'm not, I'm not saying he's fat, right? His high school graduation photo was an aerial shot. <laughs> Anywho, I took Tony out to lunch, right? He loves to eat, that's all he's, he's about, had like five hoagie sandwiches, my hopes, is he'd eat so much that he'd get tired, kind of like that post-turkey fallout that you get, and he'd go back to his motel room. But uh, unfortunately not for me, no such luck. Oh, okay. Good now stuff. You, is that Cousin Dougie? Dougie? Stop getting distracted. You fed me, you had me look at cars, you had me play a game, uh, you had me listen shame. to jokes on the phone call. That's pretty funny. Now let's see my car. Could have saw your car anytime you wanted to. Why didn't you ask? I did ask. I asked over and over again. What? And you didn't want me back here. Yeah, there it is. You got me. We haven't touched it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see what I mean? It's right there. It's been there the whole time. I went. I didn't know you wanted to see it. Yeah. Okay, that's it. So I know you got a lot of purple challengers around here. That's your car. Yeah, you recognize the shellac down the side of it. Absolutely. Added on a trunk release. Yeah, that's all okay. your stuff, yeah. baby. That's all yours. Take a look, though, huh? Oh, yeah, look what I see. Somebody's just working on this. Oh, because there's tools in there? Yeah. I, yeah, Doug's been working on it. I told you we were in process. I mean, he just... Process? This is... Yeah, in yeah. process. Okay, we don't just take a car apart in an hour, okay? You're looking for somebody else. Look at that. Look at those floors. Look at that. Okay, I gotta that's ask a, you. Know, that's a lot of purple for it. It is a lot. Of, a lot of times they didn't go that far. Just exactly, right. And I don't know why the, the matting stuff is painted either, because that went on after the fact. That's usually black. But you're changing a couple things on this car, yeah, is that true? Yep, yep. Normally I restore my cars exactly to how they were built on the assembly line. I'm gonna take a couple liberties here. They're not really uh, modifying the car. A couple things like the, the vinyl roof on the car on this car was originally black and with a white vinyl top, I think it'll bring out the purple much more. It also had a, a, a black body side molding on it and I'm gonna replace that with a white longitudinal decal. Uh, so that'll, that'll make the car pop a lot more. And we're gonna change the seat colors from black to white again. I think that's what my wife likes. She likes the purple and white. 
I want to go with a white bench seat with the fold down armrest. Yeah. I believe they're Which much is, more comfortable. That's what you were saying. I've never actually driven and, one, oddly and, enough. And they look like buckets because they use the same uprights. Looking through the windshield, you'd think it's a bucket seat. You have to, you'd have to look in to tell. Yeah. Um, Do you have one? Yes. Oh, very nice. So you'll be getting that. And uh, white, you said. And so. Yeah, we're going to go with white interior instead. All of, white garnish, white, white headliner. Uh, Can't I might go with black headliner and black dash and black A pillars. Yeah. White seats for sure. And it's door panels, I'm not 100% sure okay. about. Yeah, and look, we got the black out on the cowl. It is, yeah. I was noticing that and the look, other you, day. You got oversprayed black down here. No two cars that's are what the they would have done. Um, is this an N95? Yes, it's California Emissions. Okay. It's N95, and it's, it shows V1X and V5X. So V5X must v, be the body side v, mold. V5X is the body side okay. molding. What did I say, V3? I'm v3. sorry. V3 yeah. is convertible top. I don't know what I'm... Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so I'm tired. You. Yeah, uh -huh. and then the V1X would have been your black top and you're going white yep. on it. Okay. And, but yep. the N95, that would have gave you this vapor return line and this three nipple breather, which was standard in 71. Yes. But California was always a year ahead. Yeah. When I first saw the pictures, I liked the originality of the car. I mean, heat stove on the exhaust manifold still, not hot rod. Absolutely. Rotted, right. You know, and it wasn't rotted out. Right. You know. But boy, the original idler pulley right here, the original protector for the heater hoses is still there. That's the stuff that's hard to put back on, so people don't usually do it. Oh, and somebody changed the fan blade out. Yeah. And the clutch is gone. I, try to... I can't see all the way around, but I'm not seeing anything that's showing me that these belts aren't original. Look at the belts. And you've done AC cars before, so you know the AC routing. And uh, matter of fact, one of the first cars I looked at with it was another purple. It was. It was a, a sunroof car yep. with AC. So, no, that car didn't have AC. Oh, that one That doesn't. one didn't. Uh, little Kimberly Cooks, little Barracuda was an air conditioning. That 72 okay. Charger was an AC car. Right. Look at the uh, body stamping here. Isn't oh, yeah. that different? You want me to educate you on that? Yeah. Or you already I, know. I know it's Los Angeles. It is, and, and that's the whole different. You go out in that lot right now, even though there's no nomenclature anywhere about this. They put it in the same spot on the upper cow panel, whether it was a Hamtramck or LA. Right. But the difference between a Hamtramck and LA on the core support is the numbers. We just looked at that chart challenger a little bit ago. Remember, I was having a heck of a time yes. and I was walking the light because I was trying to see between the radiator. Well, the the, uh, Los, the Los Angeles cars, the E cars, they are all up here really easy to see. Oftentimes yeah. underneath the sticker and it looks like it probably was at one exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, that's a very, very, very nice car. I'm really looking forward to working on that, getting that. And not for you, because you're a pain in the ass. Cindy, she's an angel. Hi, Cindy. You're the best. When can I show up with the keys? And Oh, I have the keys here. <laughs> When's it going to be done? You know what? Damn soon, my little friend. Damn soon. Got that. Yeah. Don't timestamp this, anybody. <laughs>
I love it. And look, it's faint. There's something on the pump. Oh, there is. And that's got a 10-4 on it? A 104? 10 something. How about that? One of the biggest bonuses I saw in the car was that car has original exhaust on it. A date coated original exhaust. And when Mark and I earlier were looking at the Hemi Challenger, he had mentioned that that was the first car he ever had here with original exhaust. And here's the second one. Well, really, my car may have even been here before that, but these are the two cars he's ever seen with original exhaust. So that's sort of cool. And that's a really tough thing to come by. And made me small. How about the mufflers? Oh, they're, oh, they are. They sure are. Now, this is interesting here. At a glance, when you look at that one, you look at the other one, they look the same. But this is obviously a replacement right. part. Right, it's later replaced. In fact, you can see somebody welded to the uh, jump over. What is it, 3413, 4930? Yeah. Yeah, so it's one digit extra from a part number. Interesting, yeah. Now, how about this side? And yet over here, let's see if we can find some numbers on that. Oh, yeah, up here. Here we go. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. Oh, yeah. Now, this one's the 304th day of 69. And that matches the... Uh, that matches your... Um, this is 304th day also. Yeah. So this resonator and muffler were made the same day. No undercoat, no undercoating on the no car. No undercoat car, but pretty solid. Very. And how about that sway bar? Yeah, that's funny. You know, <laughs> I'm on the here, I'm hanging on it. That, that First of all, 440, six barrel and Hemi cars couldn't get a rear sway bar. Nope. But this isn't even an E-body rear sway bar. This is a late B-body rear sway bar. That's like a 73 or four or yeah. something. Yes, okay. it is. Oh, that's interesting. I do want to add a factory e-body sway bar. Oh, sure. Yeah, I don't blame you. It makes them drive nice. And you're going to have to okay. notice where it goes on the frame Somebody wheel. added that on there off of like a 73, 74 b-body, this, this sway bar setup. So we'll put one back on it off an actual e-body. Look at the problem with it. Oh, it's hitting. It's yeah. actually hitting right there. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you've noticed on the e-body frame rails on the rear frame rails. If it didn't have a sway bar, it had the little pilot holes for putting just the wrist. Yeah, just a pilot hole. Right, but this is an early car before they had the sway bar. Didn't even so know there's no pilot holes. Oh, okay. So when I send you out the sway bar, you're gonna have to oh, check sure on the car. Oh, sure enough, yeah. So, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, yeah, the AARs hadn't even been thought of, DAs. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's smooth as glass right through there. Yep. So being that this is an early car and a disc brake car, it got three valves instead of two like the later cars got. I think around December is the drop-off. And there's no lockout linkage because it's column shift. Right. So you don't have right. any of that. You go into park, you're there. Same oil pan as the Hemi six packs and skid yep. plate. Because it had the deep oil pan, you can see it comes down to the bottom. 70 and 71. So I'll tell you, overall, pretty damn nice car, buddy. Good car to start with. Yeah. Shouldn't take you long. I'd love to pin Mark down to a date, but I know he's got a lot of other cars going on. And, you know, it's probably going to take another good year before it's done, but I think I have to make more surprise visits on Mark. Do you stop working the time thing? You know what? There are people that have been here four years, okay? So just take it down I've not. had cars. This really replaced another car that's been here four years. Eh, you know what? I, don't, I know what you're doing, and I don't like it. That's going to be great. So make sure you tell Cindy we're working on our car. Everything's going to work out. She's going to love it. Blizz and Plasm. He's going to call you next time. Blizzoo.